Hey everybody, this is Dave from AskUncleDave.com. Today I'm going to show you how to install a cigarette lighter adapter to your John Deere D140. This is a residential mower uh, at its 22 horsepower V-twin, 724 cc's of power, total power. And uh, they made a couple of adjustments. They moved uh, the different parts closer so that you can pretty much access them a little bit easier. So this is what the inside of my new John Deere looks like. Um, now, they also added a cover onto your glove box uh, here. This is your uh, where you put your gloves and things like that. Now, down there, you're gonna see a 12-fold uh, socket that I installed in there, and I'm gonna show you today how to do that and the easiest way possible so that I can put my phone in here, the wire, plug it in, and then close the cover, and it'll be debris-proof uh, and somewhat waterproof, but not totally waterproof. I sprayed this with a hose and we did get a little water inside. But, uh, you know, I keep this in my garage uh, right over here, right behind my motorcycle. So I don't really have to worry about it. Now, what they took away was that socket. They used to have a socket on the old uh, John Deere's down at the bottom here where your feet were. But I ended up always stepping on it and cracking it and things like that. So now let me show you my old John Deere, what I was talking about with the socket. Okay, here's my old John Deere. This is the L120. And uh, like I said, they didn't have a cover on it uh, here, so all the water and debris got in there. And down here, you're gonna see a hole in which I took the old socket out, and I'm gonna actually use it on my new uh, John Deere. But you can buy them on eBay for a couple of bucks each. So uh, this is still a great engine. This uh, mower lasted me about 12 years. I, I drove it through hell and back. And, uh, you know, it just keeps going. So I'm just using it to pull, you know, heavy rocks and things like that with the cart. So let me show you the demonstration table of what we're going to be doing today with the socket. Okay, on this picnic table, I have the whole setup of what you need. Uh, if you might have some of these things laying around or otherwise, just buy a pack of, uh, of a bunch of these things. So I got my battery here. We're going to connect to it. And I'm going to show you how we're basically going to connect it onto the John Deere but we're going to do it all here on the table so you could see it all laid out in front of you. So you might need some snips to snip some wires. Test light, uh, you're going to need wire strippers, and you're going to need a small screwdriver, and this brush here uh, right next to the screwdriver, which you want to clean your terminals off. If you have an older machine, you want to make sure your terminals are bright silver and they don't have rust all over them and things like that. Um, you might need some um, needle nose pliers, a roll of duct tape or uh, some kind of tape, uh, like painting tape, you know, that blue tape. You're going to need some fuses here. Now, these are ATM fuses. This is made, uh, they're smaller fuses that fit into the fuse holder that I have. Uh, we're going to use a 10 amp uh, fuse. That's the red ones that you see here. Uh, you could buy a pack like this. Now, we also have an inline fuse because we're going to want to, uh, between the socket and the battery, you're going to want a uh, 10 amp fuse so that if it ever gets hot or there's a, a surge or something like that the uh, fuse will pop and then you could just replace the fuse and start over again lessen the load uh, but basically cell phones and things like that they don't have a heavy load I got some connectors on here uh, that connect to the wires now here are the connectors uh, this is the, the uh, ring connectors that I have they're right here they're, I'm, they're in the wrong box but here are the ring connectors here uh, so that you connect it to your battery terminal and to parts of the chassis. Uh, that's where we're going to ground with the black wire. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, here we have some blade connectors so that we can connect to the back of the socket here. This is the old one from my old John Deere. It's 12 volt. Um, it has a ring that screws on so you could tighten it into that glove box. And then here in the here is the positive and here is the negative uh, lead that you put those uh, connectors on these uh, these here I also have a switch here and the reason I bought a switch <clears throat> excuse me the reason I bought a switch is because I want to be able to shut it off completely if I have my phone connected uh, so that you know in those days when you try to start your engine when it's cold out uh, you don't want any load drawing from this battery you want it to just be for the start to start your your lawnmower um, so I just have a switch here that I'm going to install inside the hood uh, just underneath somewhere and where I could just flick it and, and uh, turn it on and off. Uh, we also need some zip ties and you might want to get out 
uh, get some wire here. I have a 12 gauge wire, I have black and I have red for the positive. And uh, you need at least six or seven feet uh, in order to run the wire from the glove box to under where the engine is. I also used a one inch bit and uh, I'm gonna show you a little trick on drilling the hole. Now the new John Deere's, you can actually take this out very easy. There's two clips underneath, you separate them and you basically lift the cover completely out of the John Deere. So now you have a little gaping hole there and now you have your cover here. So inside the cover, I have the hole. Here's the hole right there. I drilled it with a one inch bit, uh, even though it's too small for the socket itself, the socket is a little bit bigger. But what I did was I wanted to make a nice tight fit. So I drilled the one inch hole underneath and I used a, like a sheetrock knife just to chisel out enough to get this thing to slide in tightly. Uh, the trick of making a perfect hole in this plastic here, this plastic is very tough. It doesn't shatter. Uh, it's like ABS plastic. It's very, very strong. And what you do is you put a piece of tape, uh, the duct tape, right over here and then you do one on the inside and you you know mat it down so it's nice and tight and then when you drill uh, basically it holds it from shattering uh, we do we used to do that in the old days with doors when we have to shorten the doors you throw some tape across the bottom and it doesn't splinter uh, you don't want that to happen because then you know you start wrecking parts that you have to go and order through John Deere in order to get a uh, replacement so that's pretty much it with all the parts that we need. So now let's fabricate what we're gonna be doing right here on this table, and then we'll do it on the machine and you'll see. It's very easy to do. And by the end of this, you'll have charging for your accessories uh, right on your John Deere as you're cutting the grass. So sit tight. So basically what we're gonna do is pretty much we're gonna have our socket here, and we're gonna plug in and we're gonna plug this to our phone, all right? So now the end of the socket, let's take that off. Uh, we're gonna have a blade that we're gonna put on, this blade here. You basically pu uh, push it right into here, you strip some of the wire back, and you squeeze with the uh, front part of here, and you squeeze it on tight so that it stays. Uh, you can also run a lighter on this, and it'll actually shrink it a little bit. Um, the wrap will shrink right around and make it nice and tight. You might even wanna throw a little piece of uh, solder right into there uh, just to keep it from you know fraying out and, and it gets a nice tight fit so we have our inline fuse here and we're going to connect this part to the battery this is the ring uh, that you shove in here and you crimp down and you shrink wrap uh, you know use lighter and it will shrink this down to it so basically we're gonna have it like that and what I did was I have this part connect right into the positive right here. Um, this part right here into the positive. Sorry, to the positive. And you can pretty much take these blade connectors and open them up a little bit. So what I did was I have my switch now, and this is gonna be next to the battery part. I'm gonna show you my switch. So with the switch, they have these tiny little screws uh, that you could take off and basically you have a blade there that you can put a female onto so i'm going to hook up one of these here like this and then i'm going to hook up this one here so basically you interrupt the red wire with the switch you also interrupt it with the fuse so now this is going to get connected to the battery and this is going to be inside the glove box so that's that wire. Then for this wire here, this is the black uh, ground wire, and we're gonna connect that into here, into this blade. Uh, yeah, right into the blade, just like that. And now we're gonna connect it to a battery. So all we have to do now is pretty much connect it to the, the red to the positive, and then one right here. And I'm gonna show you that it has power uh, let me show you with a little light on the the little light on there. I'm going to show you. So basically, you would screw this into your terminals, and you would have power. I'm going to show you right now. You have power if you flick the switch. So the switch is on the off position. We're going to turn it on the on position, and you're going to see the light 
is lit up right here. And if we turn it off, we'll turn it off and it completely stops drawing and your light is off now, okay? So basically that's it. We're gonna have this red wire and this red wire from this red wire from here to the actual socket is gonna be six feet long. And it's gonna run all the way up the frame and connect right into the battery. And then the black wire is just gonna go right from the glove box to part of the frame. We'll just hook it right to the frame. We'll screw, we'll find a screw hole and we'll screw it right into the frame. And basically, that's it. So let's do it now on the John Deere and I'll show you. Okay, on the John Deere, you're gonna see that there's a frame here. So here's the black frame inside here. I mean, come into the wheel well. wheel well. So here's the black frame. It goes all the way from the back, all the way to the front. And the best place to put your wire is where John Deere puts all their wires, inside the frame. They have a whole bunch of wires here inside the frame. It's hard to see. And basically we're just gonna run along that frame that comes all the way up to the front here. And we're just going to come in where they come in, right through the front here. I'm going to connect to that post, the red post down there that I showed you, uh, right there. So here's the red post right there. We're going to connect right to that. And then, like I said, we're going to find a hole in our frame, which we probably can use any one of these holes here and just run a bolt through it and put one of those ring connectors. And then basically that's it. You have everything hooked up. We're gonna have our switch just floating around in here or maybe I'll fasten it to something. Okay, so we got it all hooked up now. And you can see that we got the green light. We're charging my son's uh, iPhone, but I can charge my iPhone 6 Plus, but I'm using it to film. So basically I wanna show you what it looks like underneath. So underneath we have it uh, coming out of the bottom here. I put the tray back, I have it all zip tied, I have it all taped up in case there's water shooting from the wheel. Uh, you want to keep it pretty much dry. So we have it connected to our frame at the bottom here. The black wire connects to that screw on the inside of the frame. And I'm going to get a better screw, of course. And then we run along the whole frame with the red wire that we have here. And we come up to here. And you're gonna see that I have the red wire coming up from the bottom. It's this one here. I'll show you. It's this wire here coming up. And it comes up and I have it taped to, you know, the, uh, using electrical tape and connected to the fuse. And this is the 10 ATM fuse. And then it comes over and connects to the wire that goes right to the terminal uh, right here and shares it with the shares it with the red, see the the, blue, the yellow connector? That's the ring connector and it's sharing it with uh, the one that's there for his accessory and for the starter and things like that. So the solenoid. And um, so now we have the power running to it. We got the fuse. And uh, now if you wanna do it with switch power, now this is a constant power. So even when the mower is off, you're gonna get uh, power to your uh, devices. So if you wanted switch power, I pulled out the ignition switch. Uh, so it's shaped like a Y. You see here, it's got an ear here and an ear there. Now the wire that you want to bite into, you have to follow along the yellow wire here where my thumb is touching. This yellow wire, if you follow it along, you can pretty much split that wire in half and then connect, um, connect into it with your red uh, positive wire instead of connecting it to here. You connect it to the yellow wire. So when you turn your key, you'll now energize uh, the socket and it'll only be charging when the mower is on in the on position, in the on position where the lights are on, uh, or it will it will do um, if you were totally on, you know, the engine's running. So even if you just turned it a little bit, it will start powering up your devices. So that's how you do switched uh, power. That's when you turn the key. Otherwise, this is constant power the way I've hooked up here with the fuse and the red wire. Now the black wire, you know, it's right where the socket is hooked to the frame. And that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed it. It's a very easy install. Uh, you can now power up your devices when you cut the grass and things like that. So I hope you enjoyed it. 
and I will see you on the next video.